it's Sophie. So before we jump into today's video, um, I just want to let you know that I have a new camera, so hopefully the video quality is looking a little bit better than it has been. Um, but bear with me, um, because I am really just getting to grips with it, so it may be that it, a few odd things happen in these next few videos, and I will, I will sort of learn and figure out quite how to control it in time, because it's a little bit terrifying at the moment. So with all that in mind, what we're going to do today is my fiction wrap up for the month of June. So once I felt like I had a really um, unproductive reading month this month, um, I feel like I have quite a few things to show you, so I'm just going to try and do them as quickly as I can. So the first book I have to show you is Nell Zink's uh, Miss Laid. So I read The Wallkeeper by her last month and enjoyed it. Um, and I had a little bit of doubt about going into it because I'd heard um, it was a little bit of a literary darling and um, I always have a little bit of scepticism when I hear that about a book. Um, I actually really enjoyed this one as well. So just briefly on the premise, um, this is about a, a young student called Peggy who enters into a, a sort of um, very odd relationship with her poetry tutor um, or her teacher at her university. Um, the book itself is much more than that, um, but I think to avoid sort of spoilers and, and anything else, um, I can't really go into too much detail, but what I will say it's about her life unfolding, his life unfolding, and sort of about those who interact with them as well. Um, so there are sort of four main characters slash storylines, and I found each of them really intriguing. Um, I found it a really funny book. Uh, I found the last one of hers quite funny as well. Um, I think I did prefer this one to The Wall Creeper, in all honesty, just because I really enjoy that sort of university, sort of school-esque vibe in my books. I've always think that's really fun. Um, and I thought that the, the way these characters were interacting and the manner of these characters sort of coming into the story was more interesting um, than The Wallkeeper was. So sorry for a bit of, of vagueness, um, but if you are interested then, then by all means have a shot. The next one I'm only going to wave in front of your faces and that is No Country for Old Men by Cormac McCarthy. I've spoken about this one um, already in my Cormac McCarthy video, so I'm not going to go into anything here. The video will be linked down below for you though if you are interested. So the next one I have is The Four Books by Jan Linke. Um, this is one of the Man Booker International um, ones that was shortlisted. I was working my way through them obviously and then the prize was announced and at that stage I was kind of um, quite sort of full of Man Bookers and full of international translations at that time so I jumped into a few lighter things. So this did take me forever, this took me nearly a full month to read and it's not like it's big um, and I do think that kind of hampered my reading experience a little bit. I did enjoy it. Um, but I think I enjoyed more the sort of intellectual message behind it and sort of the history of, of speaking about these re-education camps in China than I did the story itself. Um, I think it's very cleverly done. I think it, it clearly the writer is very intelligent um, in the way that they're putting together these these stories and these pieces and it all sort of works and you get a very nice, oddly biblical story as well. Um, so I would say if you're already interested in it, they'll probably pick it up, but I'm not going to sell anyone on this here. Partly, I think, because the way I read it um, did mean I didn't enjoy it overly, uh, but I don't know if that's the fault of the book itself. Um, so if you are interested in sort of the storyline of following these individuals who've been drafted into this re-education camp um, because they have sort of these political ideas that aren't, aren't allowed, um, then, then, you know, maybe do pick it up. But I can't recommend it to you with any level of certainty, I'm afraid. And the next one I have is All My Friends Are Superheroes by Andrew Kaufman. And this one I can definitely recommend to you. Um, I absolutely love this little book. Um, so essentially the story is about a man called Tom. And Tom ends up sort of falling in within this crowd of people, as you sort of do sometimes, who are all a little bit different to him. All of them are superheroes. And he stands out in being the only one who doesn't have any kind of special powers whatsoever. Um, at its heart this is a love story um, but it's also sort of that odd sort of friendship mixed in and um, the sort of experience of being unsure of what to do next with your life and, and sort of where you fit in. Um, I just thought it was absolutely wonderfully done, I thought, I thought the characters were brilliant, I thought the idea was so good and there are some lovely lovely quotes in here as well that I sat down and read to my brother and he thinks he might pick it up because it's so small and he rarely ever reads, he, he maybe might read one book a year. Um, so I'm trying to sell them on this one, so if you have heard this and heard the buzz and aren't sure, um, just have another voice telling you that it's definitely worth it. Go and read this, it's brilliant. And then the next one I have is Alone in the Classroom by Elizabeth Hay. Um, this is a Canadian novel and apparently did very well in Canada, but I found it so forgettable. Um, yeah, I the main sort of storyline is this, there's a, a young girl who's murdered um, and there is sort of suspicion around sort of who's done it. Um, and around whether or not this similar sort of um, incident with a young girl may be linked to it. That's sort of the overarching line, but really it's a study of sort of family and um, 
sort of the intergenerations of family um, and I felt as though that wasn't actually done all that well and that was the majority of what the book was. Um, I picked it up sort of expecting more of a thriller type thing than this sort of family saga again so maybe that impacted the way I perceived the book but I didn't think it was done well. I've seen a lot better sort of intergenerational you know character studies um, than this and it just kind of felt like the, the sort of thriller element or the, the violent element was just tacked on the side just to sell it and yeah I can't recommend this one to you at all I'm afraid. And then next I have Everything I Found on the Beach by Simon Jones. I read The Dig by Simon Jones uh, quite recently and really really enjoyed it. I thought it was such an interesting um, book and so I really wanted to pick up something else. Um, the Dig was his most recent piece so this is uh, one of his pieces he wrote earlier in time um, and I kind of wish I'd picked this one up first because whilst it was perfectly passable I think his writing has improved and I think I came in with too high expectations because I enjoyed The Dig so much. The basic sort of storyline involves three different characters. You have um, a sort of gangstery middleman um, who's just kind of getting along and doing his job. You have um, this sort of fisherman slash farmer slash hunter sort of character um, who is muddling along, he, he's trying desperately to provide um, some sort of semblance of a, a relationship for his best friend's son um, because his best friend's died and he's trying to be that sort of male figure for him and for him that comes across and he's wanting to buy the house that they grew up in and redo the house for them um, and potentially buy a boat that he can then start his own business rather than going out and fishing on other people's behalfs. Um, and then you have a character of a Polish immigrant who has re very recently come across the country and is trying to settle into his life with a new wife and a new baby um, as well as all of the other <laughs> aspects that you know struggling to land in, in the UK and, and get your feet will bring. I think one of the issues I had with this is his work is quite heavily influenced um, from what I would understand by sort of Steinbeck, um, Hemingway and Cormac McCarthy as well. Um, and whilst all those things are, are brilliant and, and great, I feel as though here he was borrowing too heavily. Whereas I feel in The Dig, which I would highly recommend if you haven't heard me talk about that already, um, I did feel as though it was his own voice a little more than it was in this novel. The rural scenes um, and the depiction of this sort of, because it's all set in Wales, this, this sort of Welsh life and the countryside and the sea uh, felt very British and very real and um, the sort of storylines you progress, as I mentioned the middleman is sort of this kind of gang, gang person, that felt really gritty too. Um, so I don't think it was a bad book in any way, I think I gave it about four stars on Goodreads but I had come to expect more um, from him so yeah I, th I think if you are interested in either one of those and you sort of want to have that sort of picture into quite a twisted sort of underworld of this, this British life with this really rural element in it. Um, pick up the dig, um, but this one's good too, I just don't think it's as good as his other work is. So I'm really excited to see what he does next because hopefully it's improving and onwards and upwards. And the next one I have is something that's just completely up my street, so as soon as I saw it I kind of knew I'd love it. And this one is The Silent History and it's co-written by Ida Horowitz, Matthew Darby and Kevin Moffat. Um, so basic premise of this book is that out of the blue, seemingly, a generation of children start to be born who don't have any concept of language, any ability to speak. And as they sort of develop, the parents are thinking, you know, are they a bit slow? Do they have a problem? Is there something wrong with their brains? Um, and you sort of learn as you go through the story that, uh, no, not necessarily, this is just how these people are born. That's not spoilers, this is, this is sort of first few pages of quite a big book. Um, and it follows the story of the parents, it follows the story of the, the doctors, um, these sort of spiritualists, I suppose, who are tracking the movement and think they can find sort of the meaning of life in these, these wordless children. Um, and all of these other characters who interact. It was originally put together to be read on an app, um, so it's it sort of done in instalments, and I actually really enjoyed that. I, I, as you know, really like short stories, and it felt a little bit like short stories but really nicely woven together um, because it was very PC and um, sort of only sort of four or five pages of each character and then it would jump into another character. The characters recurred and I didn't find it difficult to keep track of them really. Um, I would say that I absolutely loved the book up to about here. Um, so the majority of the way through I was really enjoying it and was thinking this is going to be one of my sort of favourites of the year potentially. Um, and you know it's just my kind of thing so it was already scoring highly on that um, but there were some elements that crept in in the latter half of the book that felt really just really annoyed me they didn't need to be there the thing that I really enjoyed about this book was that going through it felt very realistic um, and it did feel as though this was really sort of happening and, and I completely bought into the storyline and to the storylines of 
most of the characters, um, I, I did feel as though they were relatively well fleshed out considering how short the pieces were for them. Um, but into the latter half, just some elements just came in that just weren't necessary. It felt a bit like, if you've ever watched Lost, when you first start watching it and you think, brilliant, this is going to be this you know, gritty survival story, loads of different characters when you're getting into it, and then the polar bear shows up. Um, so there is an element of that, um, which I don't think puts me off with the book entirely, um, but I do think it kind of spoiled the end for me. Uh, not the ending, but the end sort of portion of the book I just wasn't enjoying as much because I thought that's so gimmicky um, and I get that they're trying to push the app and that you know odd changes in the storyline might attract people like oh why is this happening uh, but it just was it just irritated me it, it seemed completely completely out of the context of what the book was I thought about. So the last book I read this month was Fives and Twenty Fives by Michael Petra and um, this is a book that I was really impressed with um, and I found really hard to read um, <laughs> This is the story of two um, individuals who are in the Marines um, and their relationship with a guy called Dodge uh, who is an Iraqi translator who um, sort of as you go through sort of working with them and, and got his own life as well and it's about not only their time there sort of told in almost these not quite flashbacks to this whole chapters but flashbacky pieces combined with the life they're living outside of the Marines and outside of Iraq. Um, I just felt as though it was, it did a really good job of bringing the human element to both sides of the conflict and that's kind of what I feel is most important when you're talking about war novels, war um, depictions, is that you aren't ending up with this sort of heroic image on one side and this sort of, you know, enemy side on the other. Um, and I don't think it did that at all. The, the author did serve in the Marines and I think that added to it a lot. There was a lot of, um, it felt sort of like personal touches uh, and, and memories that came into it, although there's no way I would know that, but it did feel as though it was quite personal to him. I also felt it did a really good job of explaining the sort of feeling of the military as well. Um, I, I've never been in the military proper, but I was in the cadets when I was in school and um, I was quite into it when I was in school so I used to go to all the camps, I spent lots of my summers marching around um, fields and going for assault course and stuff which is great fun when you're a kid. Um, I did some officer training as well because it's something I thought about um, potentially doing when I left school if I didn't end up doing university and so whilst I've never been in the forces I've had a sort of glimpse of that life um, and it is very different, it, it's a very strong feeling of sort of camaraderie and, and pulling together sort of all the time and I think um, the depiction of it in an actual war zone um, was really well done and it came across on the page um, very well. If you follow me on Twitter you know that I am currently sort of looking into reading a little bit more about the Middle East because I've sort of realised I don't know all that much about it um, and whilst this is still a very western centred view and I'm trying to sort of move away from that I think it was a nice way to dip my toes in a little bit more. Um, so if you are interested in it at all, I know some people just hate war novels altogether, um, but I think it's tastefully done and well explained and well written, um, so I would recommend this one to you. I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope that the camera has behaved itself and that I can actually see what I've done. Um, and yeah, I will see you immediately, because I film them in twos, um, for my non-fiction etc wrap up. Bye bye.